Um, I'm so glad to have you on the show. I want to talk about something very important today, and that is the Google Analytics 3 slash universal data going away. Right. Um, tell me what you've heard clients say about this kind of thing when you bring it up. <laughs> Probably the one thing that strikes me every time is that a, a lot of people seem to believe that their GA3 data is magically going to be in GA4 because they've done a migration. So I think that terminology has confused people. And so that data from GA3 is not going to be in GA4. And so no. <laughs> it needs to be moved and kept because at, at some point Google is going to no longer give access to that data. That, that data is not going to I mean, exist. Like delete, like delete, delete. it. And yep. everybody says July 1, 2024 is the new date. And Google says that's a hard stop. And I wouldn't test them. Would you? <laughs> no, no. I mean, they sprung the release of GA4. I think it felt kind of like a surprise for a lot of people that it was like July of 2023 is the end of UA3. And I, mm -hmm. I think we're still at this point, December 2023, I think we're still at a point where people are trying to sort out their migration to GA4. Mm -hmm. And if they're still struggling with that, working on that, it's going to be very easy for them to lose the window to be able to migrate their data from UA. Totally. So, well, this is a good time of year, New Year's resolutions to be talking about all that kind of stuff. Um, so what we've been telling our clients is, look, if you have no plan, absolutely, you should be just downloading it to Sheets. Like at the bare can't minimum. Connect it to, right. Bare minimum, download it to Sheets. And you've been doing that yes, for clients. Yes, I have. <laughs> Tell me, how's it going? Um, it is a process and depending on how much data you have and how far back you feel is important to go, the process is long and a little bit tedious, I would say, because you run into the limits of, of the API requests. So sometimes your request to download that data it's, it is not successful, maybe because it times out, maybe because the amount of data that you're requesting is too large, maybe because the Google Sheets has a limit as well in the terms of the number of cells that can be populated into one spreadsheet. And so mm -hmm. what I'm finding is that I don't know I'm going to hit any of those limits until after I've pressed run the report. I see. Okay. Well, and now a lot of people are out there probably just like trying to like export via the UI and you're doing something different. Yes. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about that too. So what are you doing? Or maybe this is a good time for you to share your sure. screen and just sure. walk us through what you're using to be able to do that. Sure. Cause it's so... marginally better than downloading <laughs> from the UI, right? It is definitely better than directly from the UI. Um, the UI really limits um, what you're able to send in one report. And I know that for a lot of users, what they want is a little bit more than what's in the UI. Um, and so, yeah. you know, from here, you are able to um, export it and send it. But as I said, there are limits and sometimes what you want is more than what's visible here. And so what we've been doing for clients is doing an export using a tool. Um, so maybe the first thing I, I would want to share is this, this is the tool that you're looking for. So if you are opening up your uh, Google Sheets and you are looking at your extensions and you don't have Google Analytics existing here, 
then that's where you're going to go. You're going to get that add on of Google Analytics. That was a favorite back in the day before Data Studio. That was a big favorite for dashboard making when we were still making dashboard inside sheets. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. now we found the utility again for that plugin. Exactly. Um, and so once you've got that plugin in place, then what you want to do is to start building the reports that you want to export. And so using that extension, you're going to create a new report and it's going to open up a menu here for you to access your accounts and whatnot. And so um, I do have a handy little how to document on how to do all of this. And I just want to share that setup. Okay, so this is probably one of the reports that um, would be useful for people to have. And that's just your default uh, channel groupings. And so after you've selected your account, your property, your view, then you're going to choose the metrics. Um, so there's you know, the typical ones that you would see in that report would be your users, your new users, your sessions, your bounce rate, and so on and so on. And so that's what you would select in um, the configuration. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've got, you know, one, you got like six metrics or five, seven metrics there, and you've got two uh, dimensions, year mm -hmm. and the default channel grouping. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to click the button to say go right and Google's going to populate your spreadsheet exactly in theory exactly well you're going to get the configuration so this is what that would look like you'd have your default channel groupings you'd have the year or the time frame that you're looking at what metrics and what dimensions are mm -hmm. um, going to populate in this report um, and then it'll also initially populate this with a limit of a thousand, which of course is not what we want for this particular instance. Here we're looking at actually exporting everything. And so I would remove that limit from mm -hmm. here. And then I just wanted to share that this, this um, can now just be copied and pasted and moved forward so that you can then start to just change the dates, mm -hmm. right? So instead of uh, building it out via this um, drop-down menu, you can just use Sheets itself to pull over and then change out the dates. Right. Well, and you know you've pulled um, essentially. Why well, see in your first one you've got July first, twenty twenty one to July thirtieth, twenty twenty three, which was of course like the last day that Google said that they were going to process the data. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know, are are reducing the dates I see across time. Mm -hmm. because... Yeah. So in, for this client, what they wanted to see was by the year, mm -hmm. and then they wanted to see it by the month. So if you notice here, the dimension is the year but here the dimension is the month. Mm -hmm. um, and so this would be the default for 2021, and this would be the default for 2022, and this would be the default for 2023. And then they wanted it by date as well. And Got so it. this one is now GA date. By date, mm -hmm. I see. And what yeah. does the data look like when this is run? So uh, for example, here, when we pull up this, uh, well, actually, let me just And actually, these. are we able to show that with the um, Google Merch Store data? Um, I, um, I haven't run it with the store data, but I have run it with this clients and, and hidden their view and whatnot. So I have run it with this. We can run it right now and just show you how that what that looks like when it does run. 
Uh, what I'll tell you is that when the report name is not present, it won't mm -hmm. run that report. So I'm only going to run this report to begin. And so okay, you go so back you to the extension. The report name. Got it. Go back to this tool. Mm -hmm. And then you'll run that report. And so here is where it starts to work. Maybe it will complete successfully. Maybe it won't. So this one did complete successfully. Mm -hmm. We okay. see that the other four reports in this document were not run because they don't have a name. Mm -hmm. And then when we open that report, we'll see the configuration at the top and then all the details below um, with all the metrics and dimensions that you've set up in the configuration. Magic. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Seems easy. It does. Yeah. And it, it is just time consuming, I would say. And what do you, what describe that? Say more. Because um, you just guess, did this in one minute. Yes. But this, for example, is the template for a, or a site that would be focused mainly on organic traffic. So not paid traffic. Um, and not e-commerce, just lead generation. And so this is the standard, typical report that this client needs to have downloaded mm -hmm. for them. Um, yeah, so it gets complicated <laughs> if you need all yeah. your year over year, by day, mm -hmm. by date, by, you know, all these different metrics and dimensions, goals, yeah. well, are you know? like lovingly, I'll say goals very lovingly and nostalgically, but yeah, you're mm -hmm. going to need all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit about what's been going on in terms of the amount of time. So click path, real simple, right? Upload mm -hmm. the plugin, connect your GA4 account, write down the metrics and dimensions that you want, click go. Yeah. And in practice, what does it actually <laughs> feel like? In practice, well, if I, if it's, again, it's all about how much data have you got. So if you have a lot of traffic and you have a lot of, 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 information that needs to go, you're, you're going to run into the timing out of the API. So sometimes you start to run, like I could run all of these, but mm -hmm. maybe only two of them will complete successfully. Mm -hmm. Or I could try to run the date for a two year period, a range of two years, mm -hmm. but it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to actually get that into one report. And so what I end up having to do is then take this and split it. I'm going to go, okay, well, let me see if I can get at least one year into one report. So let's change this to 2022. Let's Got change it. this to 2022. You're just trying to like make the query a little bit smaller. Exactly. So that it can run. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And I imagine um, it's only going to get worse because <laughs> not everybody's even done this yet. Exactly. And or you thought about and, it. Yeah. And you, you yourself, that business also has a limit on API requests per day. And so that has also been fun to reach that limit and be like, okay, I guess I'll get back to it tomorrow. Oh, I see. Do you know what that limit is? Uh, I don't know the, no, no, I don't know what that number is. We'll have to look that up and put it in the YouTube notes. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. So I mean, what bit of advice would you give to anybody who's like, I didn't even know <laughs> that the data was going away on July 1? Well, I, I, would say, I would say you're lucky because as of only recently, it became July 1, 2024. Just a little while ago, we were thinking this needed to be done by December 31st, 2023. So I think they were say... doing like a Filipino time strategy, you know? <laughs> You're Filipino, so you know that when you invite your friends yeah. to a party, you tell them it's at six, but yeah. you really think it's at eight. Yeah, exactly. Because if you don't, then they will not show up until nine. Right, exactly. So like, I think Google's like, yeah, it's December 31st, 2023, yeah. when really it's July. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. And, and then, I mean, now is the time to get that started, right? Like it it's, mm -hmm. you have time. It is possible definitely for you to, to get everything organized. Um, but get on it. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's the hardest part. So, you know, most of our, the viewers are can, can range actually from people who are on it, who might even have access to BigQuery where they just dump it in, or they're very devoid of any analytics resources and they're just gonna try to go do that themselves. But I think it sounds to me like main thing is be prepared for how much time and trial and error that it could take, mm -hmm. depending yeah. on how much data. Maybe you'll be one of the lucky ones and you can, do it in two minutes as Maria showed on the very first try. Yeah. Wouldn't that be Maybe. beautiful? <laughs> yes. And if so, put it in the comments that you're the one that actually got this all done in one go. Awesome. Well, um, I'm going to put it up in the blog, one of these templates so that they can see kind of what you've done and give it a try for themselves. Um, and also your instructions. Thank you so much for making that. No problem. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that if you care for year over year comparison data, which we don't always like to talk about here because we like to do customer research, but recognize <laughs> that it's important that this is something you're going to want to get your butts on pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Any parting words for that person who's going to do it? I don't know. I mean, are you a multitasker? Can that be something that can be happening sort of on the side so you can continue getting other things done? If you are, great, because it it is, as I said, time consuming. If not, then I think, um, you know, enjoy the process. Think of it as slow, meditative <laughs> Right. Put on work. some manifestation music while you're mm -hmm. doing that. I like it. I like manif yeah. I mean, I like manifestation work, but I also like kind of like data of just waiting around for queries to populate <laughs> as yeah. well. Cause I can be in my own head thinking about startups and dragons or something like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Maria, for sharing that with everybody. No uh, and if they want to get in touch, look on the ClickPoint website. Yes. <laughs>